Hello everyone and welcome to another high low game of Age of Empires today. My wife had to reorder all of our Halloween mini chocolate bars on Uber Eats because someone who shall remain nameless ate all of the ones she already bought every single last one. And so riding an enormous chocolate sugar high, I sit down to watch Kapuch playing as the Malay in red take on the Viper playing as the Tatars in teal. Now all the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings and try to get their butts up to Feudal Age ASAP. A little bit easier done for the Malay. Not a bad opportunity for us to take a look at the Civ matchup that we are going to be watching today. Now, as I mentioned, the Malay, primarily a naval civilization, but one that comes with a few late game land features that are incredibly powerful. To start with, their battle elephants get cheaper and cheaper as the game goes on. 25% cheaper in castle, 35% cheaper in imperial. They got all infantry armor blacksmith upgrades for free. So we'll see when Kapush hits the next age. This scale mail armor box, then the next box, then the next box. If we're lucky enough to see Imperial will get lit up automatically. And speaking of infantry, their militia line units can be upgraded to cost only food, no gold whatsoever. So while the Malay don't actually get champions, this upgrade called Forced Levy when combined with the supplies upgrade, actually turns their two-handed swordsman into a fairly cheap 65 food-only trash unit. Now, lastly, to help them raid their opponent's base, the Malay can turn to their unique unit, the Karambit Warrior. This is an incredibly cheap, super fast, but on the whole kind of weak infantry unit that only takes up half a population space. So if Kapuch trains 20 of them, they only take up 10 population space. So by the way, if you were paying attention, that's not one not two but three different units that the malay can spam 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 their cheaper elephants their forced levy two-handed swordsmen and their karambit warriors now in order to help you get to the late game get these features units upgrades etc as fast as possible the malay do advance to the next age a lot quicker than normal which means you can either rush, rush, rush to the next age, or if you like, maybe take a look at these lemon bushes with the pretty blue butterflies, take a walk around this beautiful sandy map, uh, get your bearings, get some sightseeing. If you watch a few ostriches and zebras, maybe not the dead ones being eaten, but maybe the live ones on a safari, and then catch up to your opponent fairly quickly as you head up to the next age. Now, speaking of opponents, we've got the Viper playing in teal as, as the Tatars. That's going to be a tongue twister a civilization that does whatever it can to push players towards mounted units. Their cavalry archers come with extra line of sight. They get the Parthian tactics and thumb ring upgrades free of charge. Some of their mounted units, like their scout line units, their step lancers, and their cavalry archers can all be upgraded to get extra armor. And both, not one, but two of their unique units are in fact mounted. The first is the flaming camel. We saw that a few days ago used against elephant archers. Man, oh man, what a badass unit. Basically, a mounted petard comes with a massive attack bonus against cavalry, camels, and elephants. Now, their second is the Kashik, a medium cavalry unit that actually generates a tiny bit of gold every time it pokes and prods an enemy unit, which can be very useful in the later stages of the game once this gold, shiny fool stuff becomes more and more scarce out on the map. Now, speaking of being out on the map, very important for the Tatars to take the high ground in any battle that they can because... In addition to the usual 25% extra damage done when fighting down hills, the Tatars do another 25 for a total of 50% more damage whenever they fight an enemy downhill. This becomes ridiculously important once Trebs start coming out because the Tatars can upgrade their Trebs to have a ridiculous 19 tiles of range, which means the Viper with a Treb right next to his town center should be able to hit Kapuch's town center with a Timurid Siegecraft Treb. I am, of course, just kidding, not that much. But 19 tiles once you get Timurid Siegecraft, which is the name of the upgrade, and Siege Engineers on top of that is a pretty ludicrous amount of range that help them feed their warriors and the beasts that they ride. The Tar Herbals do contain 50% more food. These goats, a little bit more HGH inserted into their food. And in Castle Age, once you build extra town centers, each town center does spawn two free sheep which, like I said, is about 300 food minus decay, as opposed to the usual 200, thanks to the Tatar feature. Now, one thing I will note, the Viper has chosen this game to play in the color teal. I'm assuming because he wanted to play as the teal Tatars and make it very hard for every or any caster to cast this game with a straight face. I could, I was toying with the idea, let's take a look of making him yellow, but then look at the minimap based on the actual color of this Arabia, if it was a grasslands Arabia, for example, 
maybe yellow would work, but on the mini map, you can't even really see the color yellow. So I felt like, you know what? I'm just going to leave him in teal. He made the choice. He's a big boy. And uh, for all the purists out there who may, uh, you know, wring their hands and scream and claw at the sky because it's so unnatural and a perversion of nature itself to see the Viper playing in teal, eh, take it up with the man himself. We're gonna let, we're gonna respect his wishes here as Capuch already inserts himself into the firing line of sight of this town center, but the Viper doesn't garrison, and so this scout escapes unharmed. Eh, unharmed uh, with an asterisk does have 10 less HP. The Viper scout also has 10 less HP. And Capuch being real annoying here. He himself is attacking the Viper's zebra push as behind this. He has walled off pretty much his entire base, although going for a bit of a rear wall off. And not a bad one, to be honest. Primary gold and stone both secure behind the wall. So let's take an actual look at the map as it looks like our red Malay has given up with the attempt to uh, stop the zebra push, which is happening here with a scout. Okay, Viper getting a little bit creative here. New color for my uh, team, who dis? He says as he pushes a deer ever so gently with a spearman to its death. Attack path between the two bases. Let's see if there's many, many hills. One right in front of Capucha's base. A pair of hills here in the center, which our Tatar might want to take. And that's about it. The whole center pretty darn open. As we saw, primary stone and gold to the rear of the Malay base. Where are the additional resources? Obviously, extra gold, extra stone in the forward position. Extra third patch of gold. Uh, not really in the forward, kind of off to the side. As the Viper explored that part of the map. Wow, they actually did. He actually did explore that part of the map and has seen exactly where that gold is for his base. Primary gold and stone, not in the front, not in the rear, kind of off to the side, exposed, but next to a bit of a very thick forest here. Okay. Extra gold to the front, extra gold to the back, and where's your extra patch of stone? All the way down here to the bottom left. So the Viper's got a few secure resources. They're not very close but they're pretty darn secure to the rear position. And looks like uh, our Malay is gonna have discovered one, two, three, four, just hasn't seen the last patch of stone here. The Viper for his part, we know he's seen that tertiary gold. He's seen the secondary gold, has not seen, ooh, the secondary stone, which is I'm assuming he's gonna see right now. And by virtue of the wall off of the Malay base has not seen the primary and secondary gold, although, a player such as the Viper who doesn't see those resources immediately must know slash assume uh, reasonably no. Uh, a good guesstimate that your opponent has hidden their two primary resources to the rear of their base, which is now secure. So Gabuch already, very nice play to secure that primary gold, primary stone. He's already beginning to long distance mine his gold, doesn't have the wood for a mining camp just yet. Not exactly Japanese discount here for the Malay. As the Viper circles the berries, berries, which, by the way, are very much in the forward position. And let's take a look at forests, because the forests are very lush. This is not a... as much as it looks like a very arid map, I guess there are certain parts of it that are very wet. And so it lends itself to these big, juicy forests. Not in a very helpful position in terms of walling off, but they are large. And we'll see what the players decide to do with it. The Viper also seems to have three forests. One, two, three. Not very close, not very helpful. Let's keep an eye on here. I, yesterday's game really traumatized me, not uh, not catching the first kill of the game. I mean, we, we caught it in picture in picture but after the fact, but not seeing it happen live was a, uh, you know, for, for a caster, it's, you know, it's like missing the first basket of a, of a game or the first slam dunk or I don't know what the first point or forced goal I, I don't i don't know you, can you tell i have no idea what i'm talking about when i talk about sports i have no clue you know when the ball goes into the hoop and the net and the uh the people go wild and crazy and stuff and such no 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 i eat chocolate bars and pizza and play video games as any healthy 42 year old does and here we go capuch moving forward pretty scary army viper does have 10 army capo where the hell is it okay it's at home Ready to defend next to this tower. Will our Malay contest the tower? It does not look like it. We are 17 minutes into the game. Not a single kill. Viper is down two... Uh, pardon me. Pardon me. He's not down any. He's ahead two villagers. 
He's actually down five total. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I apologize. He's ahead to army count. He's down five villagers. Now I do want to point out the Malay up times. Everyone else in this game. Ooh, are we about to see the first kill? Spearman looks like he wants to. Oh, no. It's the Spearman who gets got. And this three HP scout escapes. We'll see for how long. Okay, probably pretty long. As the players put a good amount of distance between each, uh, each of their armies. So in any event, everyone else, when they go up to Castle Age, takes them just under three minutes. 160 seconds. Two minutes, 40 seconds. The Malay, 96. A minute and a half. Basically, the difference grows even more noticeable when we're talking about Imperial. The scout did finally bite the dust one kill a piece. Everyone else going up to Imperial, three minutes, 10 seconds. So, so 190 seconds, depending on how you like to uh, clock time. The Malay, 114 seconds, just under two minutes. So you can see why it's such a powerful feature. You can, again, rush, rush, rush to the next age, get out those powerful units, or you can build your economy up for a little bit. Kapoch hitting Castle Age pretty much the same time as the Viper off the back of, I believe it was four or five more villagers in the Viper. The Viper, who, by the way, has upgraded the old Botkin crossbow combo and is now headed to the southern portion of the Malay base as the Malay with his basic skirmishers not yet elite enters into the tower fire radius he knows the tower is there he was there when the uh, first hammer fell and the first brick was laid not too sure where he thought he was going here but two tatar knights are en route another spearman bites the dust and here we go let's see what they can do because they are about to get sandwiched but not the worst sandwich in the world unless you let the tatar take the high ground all of these units now do 50 percent more damage I was going to say, not the worst sandwich in the world because there's a good amount of red skirmishers here and there's a few crossbowmen that, if he wanted to, Kapuch could easily pick off with good micro. And we know he's got good micro. He's heading in with a scout of his own to see what the heck is going on. But you know what? He makes it home with a majority of these units. Unfortunately, I don't think he picked off a single one of the Viper's units. The Viper, who immediately took the high ground here, very nicely done by him takes the kill lead five to one. So in addition to that extra Spearman, he did kill three skirmishers, skirmishers who are now elite and gun down their first crossbowman. Okay, now they're elite. Now the armor is a little bit scary. Six Pierce armor. The Viper's units are not elite. They're just basic skirmishers. Remember these units come with attack bonuses against each other, which makes them a little bit more fun as they fight one another. Two knights stop to attack a house of so the third. Goes straight for the skirmisher. Not too sure you want to stick around underneath a TC. Especially not with any armor of any kind. You will die very quickly. Although with bloodlines. Thankfully for bloodlines. Otherwise he would be dead. Damn you mill. You will not gather water in a very efficient and scientific manner. While I have anything to say about it. Says the viper. As he gets shooed away from the northern portion of this area as well. An extra patch of neutral golden stone by the way. And a relic nearby. Just to the north of the Malay base is not bad at all. Killing the lion before the lion can kill him. A good move there by the viper. Spaying and neutering the animal wildlife population. There are those two free, adorable, Instagrammable sheep. I don't know if you guys saw on Reddit. Somebody posted their, uh, I think it was a, a Labrador. Who they put a blue bandana on. And for Halloween, that Labrador is going to be a sheep from Age of Empires. It is absolutely one of the cutest most adorable things I've ever seen vis-a-vis -vis Age of Empires. Which is not saying much. I mean, there, there's... This game doesn't lend itself to be called, you know, cute and adorable very often. Where is Kapuch's half-dead scout still patrolling? I love this. Just going around looking for relics. He's going to discover another one. This is what you have to do. This is the Hera maneuver. And I'm glad more and more pro players are doing it. They're just taking their super-duper weak scout... And having him actually do scouting duty. Skirmishers disperse and do gun down the night and change for one. Skirmisher, fantastic get there for our Malay. The Viper, maybe overstaying his welcome there with one night, but does he really care? Only one night. He is down, unfortunately, 16 villagers. He's going up to a fourth DC. 
Okay. Is there a first crusade for the Tatars where they automatically spawn five flaming camels per town center? Ba, 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 go the sheep as a lion gets to work and the skirmishers as well. Unfortunately, the lion doesn't have any kills. Skirmishers on the low ground do take out the crossbowmen, even with the attack bonus that the Tatar gets. Man, oh man, is that pierce armor on the skirmisher hard to contend with. Another viper scouting with a spearman who is slower than a scout, but has pretty damn good line of sight is going to discover the relic as well. So the players are kind of figuring out where the relics are. are funny that the viper hasn't seen the one relic that's literally right next to his base. Although the monk, the monk, the monk, the monk going the wrong way. This one scout. Now, if he was a Georgian scout by now, he would have already had 100% of his HP back. The viper just misses the relic Oh, by what is this three tiles? and goes completely the wrong way. Castle on the hill, securing the forward gold, kind of securing the forward stone here for our Malay. I'm curious to see what the Malay will do. It's always a big question mark what the Malay will do. One thing I can almost guarantee is that we're probably not going to get to see elephants, unfortunately, uh, just because, again, if you see elephants against the Tatars, you are begging for camels with a bunch of bushels of hay on their backs. And unfortunately, the monk will discover the relic right as this one half-dead scout discovers the monk who discovers the relic who is about to discover the afterlife. Unless, unless Kapush doesn't pay attention. Will he pay attention? Will he be able to get him home? One wackadoo. No, the HP betrays him. This is a basic monk. No upgrades whatsoever. So three attacks needed to kill it by a generic scout. And unfortunately, Capuch missing an opportunity there to snipe a monk. So he survives, and I guess the one who discovers about the afterlife is the Malay Scout. Two coins for the ferryman placed on his eyes as he descends to the river Styx. As will a few of these skirmishers, no doubt, who get caught out yet again by a group of knights. I mean, so far, knight versus skirmisher is not exactly what I had on my bingo card, but... Wait a second. Oh my goodness. Capuch's micro of these skirmishers so far is fantastic. And they disperse in what I adoringly call the fart method. This is what you have to do with skirmishers. You, like you take a fart in a room and it diffuses the exact same method here. You have to disperse and expand your skirmishers all over the place so that they can fire. Because, of course, these units have minimum range, which means they cannot generally fire on melee units unless they are ranged melee units. And unless the micro is terrible. Karambits looked like they wanted to go after the monk, but the skirmishers got there first, and now we've got Karambits. I'm not too sure how it works when you've got a odd number. Three Karambits. Is that one and a half population space? Round it up to two. Round it down to one. And even the Viper sees them coming from a mile away. Garrisons his villagers. Now it doesn't matter. Now it's definitely one population space as our Malay is seconds away from castle uh, pardon me imperial age kills two more villagers here it looks like yep. total kills on these guys 15 with three of them being villagers and where is the treb nope bracer is the imperial age upgrade we're getting and there's the treb vipers spearman guarding what exactly i'm not too sure Looks like the Viper has gotten all five relics, and so that Spearman probably could delete himself. The Karambits tried to go over here to the bottom of this fifth town center and paid the price for it. The Viper obviously saw them coming. And now I feel like we're in a bit of a holding pattern. What's the name of the game here for the Malay? Just ranged units against the Tatars who have silk armor? That's the upgrade I was mentioning that gives a whole vast group of their units extra armor. Of course, the one unit that it doesn't give extra armor for is their unique unit, the Kashik. Extra armor gives plus one, plus one to their scout line units, their step lancers, and their cavalry archers. And we're not seeing any of those at the moment. We're seeing elite skirmishers 40 seconds away from Imperial is our Tatar, but the siege has begun. Kapuch moving his very numerous, but on the whole, kind of weak army here. And now he's getting infantry upgrades, attack and speed for his Karambits, as the Vipers three Kashiks. Now, somebody commented recently that the gold is not very significant, but it's not really meant to be. 
that significant. It's not like uh, the Viking Chieftains upgrade, where you make money, where you kill a villager or a monk or a trade unit. These guys generate gold every time they poke and prod. So it's not surprising that it's not that much gold. And to be fair, a Keshek, if you're using Keshek prodding to generate gold to pay for more Keshiks, well, Keshiks aren't that expensive gold-wise. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's about to lose access to all of his relics. They're only 40 gold. So not exactly like a Nightline unit that costs 75. Oh, no. <gasps> what a shitty line of sight on these units, but they're going to see the villagers. No, he moves out right at the worst time. Right as the villagers descend on the gold pile. Hungry and greedy they are. What's happening here? A lion attacking downhill. Can't imagine the villagers not going to take care of that. And that has given Kapuch an opportunity. But wait a second. Oh, he didn't wall the villagers in as they began construction castle at 14%. Now he gets shoot away. Poke, poke, poke. There we go. Let's take a look at the gold count at the top. 261, 262, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it is a small trickle of gold. It's not the tiny, tiny, but it's tiny. It's not, let's put it like this. It's not teeny, teeny, tiny, but it's pretty tiny. More Keshiks. But now we've got a bit of an army here for our Malay. We've got a single Arbalester. Most of them are here in the forward position with these skirmishers. And like I said, this is a very numerous... There's a lot of units here is what I'm trying to say. But again, they are just ranged units. Which means if the Viper wanted to, if he wasn't busy fighting a counter unit, cancels the castle, does our Malay. Saves the stone, and now where is he going to put it in forward position? He's already got a second castle. The Viper with a very interesting odd choice for a castle. He is definitely going wood, right? Why is he putting the castle there? That is an interesting choice for where to locate your castle. Never mind. It's a very defensive castle. Also a very interesting. You're about to run out of wood here. Why the hell do you need a castle? Just wall this off if you're worried. Curious play out of both players. Very wonky castle locations. But uh-oh, our Malay's at 200 population. The Viper's are heading there also. He'll get there soon. He's at 190. Or maybe he won't if he keeps taking on counter units, halberdiers. And here we go. He's about to overrun this position. Maybe, maybe. Keshiks are elite. Fully armored. Attack-wise, not a single attack upgrade just yet. And the Viper choosing to go after the Trebs here. It looks like all the Keshiks up north have been taken care of i.e. they are no longer with us he gets two trebs he's losing a lot of Keshex for these trebs but again like i said gold wise not the most intensive hello hello ballistics where are you that was disgusting that was like 70 or 80 javelins that were thrown at those two albert ears that didn't land a single freaking hit and where are those Keshex? where are their bodies melting into the sand i see a villager here i see and it looks like a hairpiece like a wig Okay, it is what it is. The battle in continues here in the center. Both players finally at 200 populations. Ballistics finally for our Teal Tatar, who has placed yet another Edge of the World Peripheral Castle. This one makes a bit more sense when you see that he's got villagers mining gold here. Oh, these halberdiers are going to be so annoying. They're not going to live very long, but they're going to be real annoying. More villagers heading this way. He's going to put a counter castle very aggressively, Will Kapuch. Now, did the Viper go a bit too heavy on the elite skirmishers? To be fair, maybe, maybe not. Every single one of these three categories of units here is countered by the elite skirmisher. It does come with a juicy... I'm trying to click it, of course. Out of all the units, I click the tree. It comes with a plus four attack against spearmen and then another plus four against archers. Uh, Viper might want to move your Keshiks. These were very much undefended Trebs for a second. He goes straight for him. He finally has Iron Casting. Big surprise. One of the Treb falls immediately. A second Treb falls. Third one. Third one. Third one. He gets it. But again, not a free get. Random Villager. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I admire the confidence. You got to... You gotta pat, you know, pat that guy on the back. He's doing a good job. But the Keshek forces down. We're switching into light cavalry. 
We're getting upgrades for our ranged units. Aw, yeah. oh, the Karambit Warrior killed him. I would have loved to see that villager continue to attack the castle. I don't know what the hell the Viper was doing sending out that one villager. Oh, he wanted to build an outpost. Pardon me. He wanted to build an outpost. Instead, he was met with his doom. Timurid Siegecraft. So our Trebs for Teal are going to come with now 18 range. I apologize. Oh, no, never mind. They're Siege Engineers. 19 range on these Trebs. And we are going to get to see about the farthest bombardment, I believe, in Age of Empires that you can see. I think that actually Timurid Siegecraft is the longest range attack, right? Beyond uh, cannon galleons and stuff like that. Okay, Viper defending this attempted penetration in the eastern portion of his settlement. His Keshiks yet again chasing, yet again poking, yet again generating gold. And using that gold, our Tatar is going up to Hussar. Tatar, Hussar, Teal, Tatar. All of it very, very confusing. Look at the freaking range on these trebuchets. Everyone else's trebs would be somewhere here. These trebs are 19 tiles of range. Look at that, 16 plus 3. Okay, he's revealed to his opponent that he's got Hussars, so Tat... Tato, oh my goodness, Tato, uh, Kapuch immediately needs to wall up his base. Bombard cannons, trebs, and a huge army. 75 army count for our Malay to 61. Now, to be fair, the majority of this army is trashy. Or trash adjacent, but in comes some of these heavy cavalrys, and their 6-7 armor tells me that he has silk armor as well. And the Viper trying to do some fancy maneuvers here with his Keshiks is going after the Trebs. No, he's going after the Trebs and the Bombard Cannons. He gets all the Bombard Cannons, except for the reinforcing one on the upper left, but loses all of his Keshiks before he can get the final Treb. Viper is down half army count, 64 to 33, but in the blink of an eye, he's training a whole bunch of garbage. Eight Skirmishers, ten Hussars, ten heavy cavalry archers but those cavalry archers are stuck in the queue he's at 200 population he can't train them no more Keshik's going back for round two but there's so many villagers they don't get it the trebs having finished off this castle what the hell killed this villager do you see any red unit here that could have killed that villager i certainly don't Having finished off that one castle over there, they are now shelling the hell out of this center position. Keshik's going after the Bombard Cannons, leaving the Trebs to kill the Trebs. And how many Trebs does he have? Six! 19 ranged Trebs. Once this Treb falls, the castle is pretty much dead meat. I mean, six Trebs from 19 tiles. If they're on the high ground or what? Two-shotting a castle? Looks like he's abandoned the Treb attack. He's going straight for the BBC. And we've got Hussar raiding to the back. We'll keep an eye on that. See how much damage the Viper can do here. He's just multi-pronging it right now. Bombard Cannon does die. I'm happy to report that the Viper does finally have Blast Furnace. He finally gets the Treb. A lot of units walking around, taking arrow fire from units, from static defense, from trebuchets. He needs to be attacking with these arbalesters. Why were they just running around? Were they trying to go after the trebs? That's not, that can't be possible. Got a whole bunch of karambits here as well. Looks like the Hussar attack to the rear of the Malay base has been cleared up. In come the karambits, firing straight into a castle. It looks like they are fully upgraded. They do have 40 whole HP. And just like that, the Karambit. This is not a unit that is meant to be full frontal unless you outnumber your opponent like 5 to 1. He did clear up a good bunch of skirmishers, but as cheap as Karambits are, and they are dirt cheap, they're only 15 gold, and still can't really trade them out for a, uh, for a skirmisher. Viper is back with even more Hussars to the rear of the base. Kapuch has not walled himself in, obviously. And now look at this. Look at the range on these Trebs. 
I'm assuming two shotting this castle. Okay, first volley, flaming balls. Do -do 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 and now the castle falls. Oh, maybe not with the villagers repairing it. No, no, two volleys. Castle went up, it lived for a second, it died. And now the Keshiks are storming in here. The Cav Archers as well with Parthian Tactics get a juicy plus six against Spearman line units. And these are Spearman line units. And unfortunately, with the raiding to the back out of what I'm assuming are a few stables here. Yeah, okay, so the stables are here. And the loss of the center and all of a sudden the army counts have swung completely the other way. 22 to 66. It was 66 to 34 a second ago or a minute ago. Time, time means nothing anymore. Um, in the Viper just crushing through the center, but I suspect oh, some of it has to do with this as well. Even though there are halberdiers here, or rather a halberdier, no, pardon me, there are five. It looks like he is starting to wall this in, but your lumber, former lumber area is completely open. Maybe take one of these villages. You do still have 106 stone. That was just, I mean, this is just demoralizing. You spend 650 of your stone, your castle goes up, and then in two volleys, these trebs, which, by the way, you have no chance in hell of reaching. 19 range. You have no chance in hell with your army of reaching these trebuchets are just going to start shelling away at your infrastructure and Capuch, even though he's got a good amount of gold. I mean, what can you train at this point? What's, it, what's he going to do? Elephants now? Elephants are not going to do very much, although they will pop out fully upgraded with uh, the blacksmith upgrades. I mean, Capuch has every single blacksmith upgrade available under the sun unfortunately in exchange for that 35 percent uh discount malay elephants have absolutely terrible armor they only get the first armor upgrade as you can see the two missing boxes there on the left side but what a fun game what a crazy uh 20 25 minute center map contestation under both players with massive armies majority trash armies who's kidding who but at the end of the day the viper also secures or rather resecures all five relics, where are they? Are they here? There they are, okay. Man, sometimes the architecture makes it, everything's out of dome. This has a dome, this has a dome, this has a dome, this has a dome. Sometimes it's a little bit hard for me to see what uh, what buildings are what. In any event, trash, trash, forget the trash. We've got unique unit Karamit, unique unit Keshik, Arbalesters and Hussars, PKPM, great for both players. Right at the beginning for Kapuch, right at the end for the Viper. The economies, I can't see them being too dissimilar. Yeah, about 10% apart, not the end of the world. And even smaller if you remove the Relic Gold. And actually, even with the Relic Gold, the Viper has less gold than his opponent. Stone count, again. Where did this 5 come from? Where did this 3 come from? I know everyone's uh, everyone's tried to explain it to me. But I, the best uh, the best is the explanation I've heard is that it's like a fractional thing that rounds. But still, where the hell did it round five and three? Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Trash resources going very much to our Tatar. Scarce resources going very much to our Malay. Gold gained, gold spent. Okay, so everyone bought and sold and balanced their economies. No conversions whatsoever. So not that kind of game. And 13 raisings to six. And that, by the way, 13, uh, pardon me, six by the Viper is uh, going to grow to even more and more and more with these 19 range trebs. I mean, this is just, a, if you let the Tatars get up to max strength with both of their unique techs, all of the upgrades, it looks like. And uh, yeah, what the hell are you going to do against this Cavalry Archer that has 6-7 armor, a plus 6 attack bonus against your Spearmen, and that's the last thing you need is losing Spearmen against the Keshiks, who are again generating gold here and there. Let's. Uh, so he ends the game at 891. So right now we're at 932. Let's put it in slow motion. 933, 8, 9. You see, it, it's not it's not a teeny tiny amount of gold. It's still a tiny amount of gold, but it's not teeny tiny. It still can generate, especially if you retreat with these guys. I see a bunch of monks doing absolutely nothing over here. If you retreat a little bit with these guys, heal them up as we saw in a, a two or when was it? Two or three games ago? With uh, with um oh my goodness. With Leary, I believe. If you can retreat, heal them up, fight again, heal them up, fight again, heal them up, these units will pay for themselves. And anyway, it doesn't really matter. What an absolute fun game. Both players going full on center clash here. Not a lot of side swipes, not right until the very end when the Viper kept sending in small little bands of Hussars here and there. Kashik 
doesn't really want to fight anymore. He's uh, he's had enough of the bloodshed and just wants to live a life as a lumberjack. Ultimately, though, the Viper with the 19 range trebs, all five relics, center map control, denial of gold, castle destruction, and rear ending his opponent takes the W, but GG in a very fun back and forth to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.